Yeah. Thank goodness symbols like this are preserved, else we wouldn't have anything to remember the past by. <laughs> My grandfather lived through those days, saw the new century come in. That's when folks began to realize that what they'd lived through was gone. Gone forever, and no going back. Except for right here, Reynolds House. It's uh, the best of both worlds. Old-fashioned, but uh, with all the modern conveniences. <laughs> oh, those cupboards are real. Came with the house when it was first built. True antique. That's lovely. Let me show you the upstairs. Tell ya, most people don't want these big, lovely old houses. Consider them white elephants. That's why it's a steal at the price. And where else are you gonna find bedrooms this size? Hmm? With uh, closets big enough to be called rooms. Take your time. Michael, are you sure it's going to mean an hour's train ride every morning for you to the city? If it's what you want. Honey, we both have to want this. If you want to live in the Taj Mahal, it's fine with me. I want you to be happy. I want things to be the way they were. It's going to be fine. Well, as you can see, it's in move-in condition. Last owners put in new plumbing, new wiring. And a brand new paint job, top to bottom. You certainly did that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish they'd left it like it was. Can you imagine painting over this beautiful wood? Mm. Um, what are train connections to New York like? Oh, not too bad. Uh, four commuter trains stopped here in the morning, five in the evening. Station sells discount tickets for commuters. You can check with them. Oh, I wouldn't uh, bother, ma'am. That's just an old attic up there, dirty, unfinished, without electricity. Owners have come and gone, but for some reason or another, they'd never seem to bother to improve it. Do you decide what to do with it? I uh, wouldn't bother going up there. How's it going? It's sickening. I can't imagine anybody doing this.
What's the matter? Nothing. You scared me. Well, it's no wonder. The place gives me the creeps. What are you doing here? Well, I heard a noise, and I came up. Michael, look what I found. Look at this. This has to be as old as the house. This lace, the skirts. I can't believe it. And it looks like it's in perfect condition, too, except this little tear right here. That's, that's the only thing. I found an heirloom. It's just lovely. You're lovely. Uh, I'm starving. I'm going to put some coals on the fire. Michael. Glad to see you. Hi. It's been ages. <laughs> I'll tell you, it may be spring out there, but that wind feels like football weather. God, you look good. How are you? That country must be agreeing with you. Did you order drinks yet? Bloody Mary. Perfect for this weather. So how's the house coming? Oh, it's a lot of work. But it's everything I've ever wanted. And I changed the attic around into my own private little spot. You belong in the sticks, you know? You were never meant for this red race. I guess I am a country mouse. You know, my favorite memory when I was a child is I went to my grandparents' farm in Ohio. And I can I just can't even tell you how much I loved it. The the smell of baking bread in the morning and those it was cold and crisp and there were the cows and the horses and and my grandmother would churn her own butter. I'll tell you, you are a romantic kid. You are a throwback to an earlier age. I guess maybe I am. Mm. To your new life in the country. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> So, tell me about yourself. No more down in the dumps? You know, this past year, you could have taken a prize for grumpiness. Yes, I know. I've kind of been a pain. Well, that's understandable, given the circumstances. And speaking of circumstances, how is Michael? Michael is fine. D did you ever find out who that girl was? Was it one of his students? I don't know, and I don't want to know. Smart. In his profession, those bright, young, eager things are an occupational hazard. Hey, hey when am I going to see that new dress you tell me so much about? D did you have it fitted and everything? Yes, and I just got it back today. Um, you can see it when you and Bill come up. Me and Don. Bill was last month. Oh, well, when you and Don come up, you may see the dress. I'll wear it for you. How about Sunday? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe I could give up a weekend on Fire Island and spend it in the farm country. Now, that should show you how much I care about you. You get tired of those, those haystacks and cows, you come spend a few weeks at the beach, OK? Thank you. Lovely. Michael, 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 dance. Oh, honey, wait till I have time. 
Go and dance with me. Honey, you're standing right in front of the set. Who's winning? I'm not. Oh, it is so beautiful out today, Michael. When I was coming back from town, I drove right up Bond Street, found myself in the middle of a street festival. That, um, I, it was right next to the lake. They had booths, there were rides, and there was a little flea market off to the side. And honey, there were people in, in the lake. They were paddling around on these little boats that you had to paddle with your feet. It's so pretty there. The reception's crummy here. Maybe we could get the cable. Oh, I was thinking that perhaps we could go back there together. Just the two of us, and we could maybe we could walk around the lake. I don't know. It's just gorgeous. It wouldn't take that long. You mean now, right this minute? Uh, well, I, I realize you want to watch the game. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking. Well, I, wasn't I wasn't thinking. Honey. No, I don't care about the game. It, we can go. You want to go? Let's go. I do care about the game. Now, it's all right. We'll go as soon as the game's over. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. I think the dress is sensational. But it's broken up, and a foul is called. This will be a two-point foul, fouled in the act of shooting. Olganowski puts it up. What happened to your dress? I thought we were going for a walk. I fell asleep. You fell asleep? I just had the oddest dream. I, I don't know. I, then, then I woke up with this incredible headache. I was in the room. And there, there were, everything was different. It, it was so strange. That it was like paintings and easels and a statue and stuff. And, that, and there was somebody downstairs. They kept hollering, crying, Pamela, Pamela. And I just... It was just so real. It, it was terrifying. Well, you should see some of the dreams that I have. This was so specific. I really felt like I was back in another century. Wouldn't you like that? That dress, this house? You're in a continual 19th century mood. You got old on the brain, kid. No wonder you're dreaming about it. I suppose so. I just... But why Pamela? I don't even know anyone named Pamela.
I don't know. Michael. You stay put. Michael. Michael, are you down here? Come look at this. Oh, my poor cupboard. Oh. It's the only thing broken. The, uh, the windows are all right, the doors are locked. You think it was just because it was so old? I don't see how glass doesn't break just because it's old. It looks like something's been thrown through it. Look, most of the glass is on the inside of the cupboard behind the doors. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to clean it up. <laughs> I take it all back about the country. I love this house. Wouldn't you like to have a house like this, Don? <laughs> I wouldn't live in this house. It's haunted. Don't laugh. I think it is. You never found out what broke that glass, huh? Oh, I guess it was some kind of atmospheric change, all I could think of, with who knows what glass that old. <laughs> Maybe you have a poltergeist. Poltergeist. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You know, spirits that haunt houses and knock things off shelves and pound on the walls and things. I know what it is. Or maybe, maybe it's someone trying to get through from the past. You know, there's a theory that the past, present, and future exist simultaneously. And if you only knew how, you could move from one to the other. Well, if there's anything I can't stand is this whole occult explosion. <laughs> With reincarnation, meditation, exorcism, the whole country's gone nuts. Right on. I think it's fascinating. Beverly, you're scrambling your friends' brains. <laughs> you know, reading every crackpot article published in the last 10 years and scramble anybody's brains. I'm for a walk. Good idea. Oh, Jenny, come on. The dishes can wait. All right. I'll get my hat. You don't need your hat. Oh, honey, I got it specially to wear with my dress. The girl wants her hat, Michael. Let her get her hat. Go get it. We'll wait for you. Oh, don't wait. That's all right. I'll catch up with you. Uh, we'll head over to the lake. Watch yourself crossing the road.
I certainly don't think you have to do anything that drastic. Thank you. For what? For not thinking your wife is crazy. Oh. Jen, don't do this to me. It's gotten to the point I'm afraid to touch you. Is it ever going to be the same with us again? No, you're going to listen to me. I admit it happened. It did happen. I put my hand in the cookie jar and I got caught, but I can't change the past, so we're going to have to live with it and deal with it. Fine, let's deal with it. But we're not talking about cookies, Michael. We're talking about trust. You broke it. Now you're trying to glue it back together with words and it isn't working, and I am having a hard time dealing with these pieces. There was no meaning, there was no love, there was nothing. I swear, I don't even remember what she looked like until she called. I, I, I don't even know what her last name was. It's worse. It's worse. Can't you see that? Is that what sex is to you? Is that all it means? Do you have any idea who I am when we're making love? You can't forgive me, can you? The forgiveness has taken place, Michael. It really has. I feel love again. I, I, I love you as a person. And because I believe in the institution of marriage, I want this to work. Every time you touch me, I can't help but think that you're not making love to me because you love me, but because... For you, it's a physical act. It's, it's a function that you carry out, like, like, like taking a shower or jogging that's or something. It, that is not true. Well, that's I not love exactly you. Now, what I, I know mean. I have hurt you terribly, and I'm sorry. I will be patient.
Let her go. All right. She'd like you to go in. Mr. Logan, sit down. I should tell you at the outset that it's not my practice to divulge anything that was told to me by a patient, not even to the patient's spouse. I understand. Can you give me any idea of how serious this is? Well, your wife is alert, bright. Outside of these fantasies, she seems like a perfectly normal, healthy person. Did she tell you anything about my... our life together? Yes. Do you think that has anything to do with all this? It's possible, but it's really way too early to tell. Her fantasy seems to center around a man. Well, we'll get into that. Well, what now? Uh, what should I do? Be a husband. Be understanding. Just treat it with love and compassion. Oh, my, yes. There's very little I don't know about this town. Aunt Betty used to tell me stories by the hour when I was a child. She's our town's oldest citizen, well over a hundred, and her mind wanders, but she used to be a grand storyteller. I was wondering if you could tell me about the house that we bought. It's at the top of the hill, the Reynolds house. That is one of our most interesting landmarks. Did you know a painter lived there once, an artist? The attic is very much like an artist studio. Oh, yes. Yes, he was very talented, you know, studied in Paris and everything. But unfortunately, he died young, still unknown, and only one of his paintings survived. Is it possible to see that painting somewhere? Why, we have it right here. Come, I'll show it to you. David Reynolds, his name was. He buried into one of our town's oldest families, the Harringtons. The wedding reception took place right in your front yard. Then, the very next day, when they were getting ready to go away on the honeymoon, one of the horses went wild, rearing out of control, and it killed her, his bride. What was her name? Oh, now, let me think. I, I believe it was Pamela. The story goes he, he went a little crazy after that, claimed he saw his bride come back. He'd be driving a buggy down the road, and suddenly she'd appear in the dress she'd worn the day she died. She'd appear, and before he could get close to her, she'd disappear. Shortly after that, the story was he took up with some other woman. It was caused quite a little scandal in taking up with her so soon after his wife's death. So what happened? Well, that's the sad thing. He was killed. It's been an unsolved mystery to this very day. Some suspect it was the woman he took up with because she was seen leaving the scene of the crime. Others think it was his father-in-law. A bitter old man who blamed David Reynolds for the death of his daughter and challenged him to a duel. Well, anyway, shortly after Pamela's death, on the night of the town's turn-of-the-century celebration, he was found shot. Murdered, they say. There, that's the painting. Isn't she pretty? You look remarkably like her. Put you in that dress, your hair in the same kind of upsweep. Is something wrong, dear? You're so pale. Well, it's the same dress, but so what? We found the dress in the attic where the artist used to live, it figures. What about the woman? There's a slight resemblance. You put any pretty girl in that dress and there'd be a resemblance. His wife's name was Pamela. How do you explain that? A coincidence. Well, what about him seeing her ghost from a buggy on the road? That actually happened to me, and Mrs. Spates couldn't possibly have known that. You don't know what actually happened. Stories that are passed down by word of mouth for more than 75 years are bound to get this started. So you'd rather think I'm out of my mind? Well, what should I believe? That you're some kind of uh, backwards reincarnation? I might as well believe in the poltergeist that Beverly's talking about. And face it, you're creating some ideal man in your mind, some man that you can throw in my face. Well, let's talk about it. Let's bring it out in the open. You 
doing it to punish me, okay? And I deserve it. I was wrong, and I'm sorry, and I would do anything in the world I could to undo all that, and I'm trying. But you got to face the fact of what this is. It's a kind of fleeing from reality. Hell, the move from the city was a fleeing from reality. That's what started all this. So, so now my wanting to leave the city was a crazy act, too, huh? I guess everything I do is crazy. It hurts me to see this happening to you. If you allow this coincidence to influence your mind, you're going to get worse. I love you. I want you to get well. Can't you see that? Yes, Michael. Michael thinks that I am inventing this man to get back at him for what he did to me. I'm not, though. I, I, I didn't ask for this to happen to me. I, I'm not doing it. It just happens. It's real. You told me that whenever you wear the dress, it happens. Yes. Why don't you destroy the dress? Why? Why? I mean, I, I, what is the dress? Listen, Jenny, the dress is the trigger that your subconscious uses to keep you from getting close to Michael. My sub... You, you, so you're trying to tell me that I'm not really seeing this man that I know I am? That is exactly what I'm telling you. It's an illusion of your own making. It's not reality, Jenny. Well, it's not is, reality, and you know it. What is reality? What do we really know about this universe? What do we know about time or infinity? I mean, somebody just found a ring around Jupiter they never knew was there before. Isn't it possible that... that a door has been opened to me by some miracle, if you will, some kind of a door to the past? Doors to the past do not open. Men walk on the moon. Real men with real boots in real machines. Right. And before that, it was nothing but... I mean, it was science fiction. It was a fantasy, and now it is a fact of life. So why isn't it possible that what's happening to me could someday be a fact of life as well? I mean, I mean, how can you you're talk... How can you just sit there and you be so... Narrow-minded? Why don't you destroy the dress? It's not reality, Jenny, and you know it. You look remarkably like her. Put you in that dress, your hair in the same kind of upsweep.
Please, I'll stay if you don't frighten me. You're not Pamela. No. Who are you? My name is Jenny. Jenny Logan. Jenny. That dress, where did you get it? It was a gift. Was that you I saw the other times on the road, at the lake? Yes. I thought you were a ghost. Pamela's ghost. They thought I was going mad. I thought so, too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't Pamela. Forgive me. I'm not being civil. May I offer you something? Will you come into the house? Considerable damage. You did this? The night after. After Pamela died. I couldn't help myself. I smashed it. I was in a rage. At God, I suppose, for taking her. It didn't help. First day on the road. Seeing you. I lived in a kind of unreal fever. I thought maybe Pamela had found a way to come back to me in whatever form the afterlife allows us. So you see, I cannot be too happy to find that I was wrong. You must forgive me. You find me at a difficult time. Well, there's nothing to forgive you for. I... You didn't ask me to come. I came because, uh, because I chose to. I'm glad you did. So am I. David, who are they? Detectives. Hired by my wife's father. The man's demented. He thinks I killed Pamela for her inheritance, and he's hired an agency to seek evidence. I've tried to convince him I loved his daughter. He can keep his inheritance. But he's adamant. He won't rest till he sees me punished. You're very pale. Are you all right? I don't feel well. I, I better go. Can I get you something? No, I have to go. Let me Thank drive you. you home. No, please. I, I, I'm sorry. I, 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 uh, I can't explain it, but I have to go alone. Please. Wait a moment. <sighs> Today has been the nicest day I've spent in some time, for which you bear no small responsibility. Please don't follow me. I won't follow.
Hello there. Good morning. Good morning. So you did come back. I see you've made a friend. He's a good dog. What's his name? Old Napoleon, I call him. Very old Napoleon. Come on. May I see a sketch? Of course. It's lovely. Yes. Lovely. Hello, David. I decided that you have been alone quite long enough, so I've come to call. I uh, hope we're not intruding. Coming here is insane, Elizabeth. You know how your father feels about me. Hello. I'm Elizabeth Harrington, and this is my friend, Edward Hartley. Forgive me. May I introduce Miss Jenny Logan? This is very foolish, Elizabeth. Your father has detectives planted all over the place. I'm sure you'll be in their reports this evening. If that's the case, then the damage has been done. So let's have an enjoyable afternoon. As we always used to. Come along, Edward. We brought lunch. I hope you don't mind. It's quite nice. We got it to Bradley's. You must go there sometime, Miss Logan. Cold chicken, sliced ham, and some fine Riere. Buns from Langstrath's, and two bottles of very cold wine. I'm uh, sure there's enough for four. We pretend not to like the summer trade, but uh, actually we thrive on it. I suppose you enjoy getting away from New York, uh, Miss Logan, but uh, I do miss it. Do you uh, plan to return soon? My plans are indefinite. Mm. I used to be um, David's favorite model, Miss Logan. That is before my uh, baby sister came back from finishing school and uh, snatched him right from under my nose. Elizabeth, please. Sorry. Mustn't speak ill of the dead, must we? She's very beautiful. Yes. She wants you, you know. Poor Elizabeth. I think she feels there was more between us than actually existed. 
She's jealous of you. She has reason to be. I'd better go. Will you come tomorrow? Will you wear that dress? I want to sketch you. <laughs> Let me drive you home. Oh, no, I'll be all right. I'll I be won't all right. have you walking there alone. But please, you can't. My husband won't understand. So it's Mrs. Logan. Yes. Why do you come here? Why did you let me believe you weren't married? Can't you guess what it does to me to see you standing there resembling Pamela? No. No. It's not just because you look like Pamela. God forgive me. You've made me forget her. There's something magical about you. I've only known you two days. I hardly know anything about you. But I feel as though I've known you for years. As though I've loved you for years. I see you have quickly forgotten what little grief might have been expected from such a man as yourself. But what's done is done. I will answer to my maker for that mistake. But there is something I can do. I understand that you are paying court to my daughter Elizabeth. Now I warn you, Reynolds, until the wheels of justice put a proper end to your villainy, you stay away from me and mine, or as God is my witness, I will kill you. What are you doing? It's, um, it's glass from the old cupboard. I, I, I thought I'd save it. It's just so old. You kissed the glass. That's a very strange thing to do. You've had another hallucination, something to do with the glass. Tell me so I can help you. Help me? You're trying to convince me I'm insane, and I'm not. It's true, everything Mrs. Bates told me. I went back. I met the man who used to live here, David Reynolds, and I spoke to him. He's a delusion. You've idealized him, that romantic head of yours. No. Honey, I can't compete with knights in white charges. I'm just an ordinary guy. An ordinary guy, yeah. A normal person who can't even allow the possibility that what's happening to me, because it isn't happening to you, is real. Yeah, you can go off and go to bed with somebody and you don't even know her name. Well, that's your reality, okay? Jenny. Jenny. Jen. Jenny. Jen, I think we ought to go away for a while. I still have some sick leave. We'll take a vacation. I don't want to go anywhere with you. 
Oh, great. Now, you're mad at me because I'm not caught up in your fantasy? I just don't want a vacation. All right. Um, then why don't you go to Fire Island? I'm sure Beverly would love to have you there. You wouldn't mind me going along? I think it's necessary for you to get away from this place. Oh, forgive me, Michael. I'm so sorry about everything. Please forgive me. Better get out of that dress. Here, let me help you. What's wrong? Oh, I'll dry soon. It's fine. Nonsense, you'll catch your death. Please don't. I'll go fix her something hot to drink. What's wrong? All day I've noticed that look in your eyes. Are you worried about your husband? No, it's not my husband. Well, who then? It's Mr. Harrington. He hates you. He truly means to harm you. Don't worry. I doubt he's as dangerous as he sounds. He wouldn't resort to violence. There's so little time.
About the duel, Mrs. Bates, is there anything else you can tell me about it at all? No, I'm afraid not. No, it, uh, we can't be sure it actually took place. It's just a story that's come down through the years. Some say it was the duel that killed him. Others say it was the woman who he took up with, who disappeared right after the murder and was never seen or heard of again. And it took place on the night of the turn of the century celebration? Yes, sometime after the ball, which would have been around midnight. Oh, by the way, we do have Mr. Harrington's dueling pistols in the memorabilia annex, if you'd care to see them. It's around the corner. Old John will help you. Thank you. Couple of relics, ain't they? You wouldn't think they'd have trusted such antiquated pieces. After all, in the turn of the century, it was pretty advanced as far as firearms are concerned. These are the actual pistols they fought with? Oh, no. Just rumored to be. We just know that they came from the Harrington Mansion. They used to sit on a little corner table in the game room by the big fireplace. Me, I doubt the whole story. Why? Why? <laughs> well, young lady, if I wanted to kill somebody, I certainly wouldn't trust my luck to some 18th century gunsmith. These pistols are unreliable. What do you mean? I don't understand. You don't know too much about guns, do you? Well, let me show you. Now, look. On both of these weapons, this, this front sight is movable. If that sight is off one millimeter, left or right, that throws your aim off by yards. How ugly. <laughs> I never could stand the sight of guns. Mrs. Bates, um... Last week, you spoke to me about your aunt. You said that she was very old and, and that her mind wanders and everything. But I wonder if she might know more. Oh, you mean Aunt Betty? Mm -hmm. Well, she's not really my aunt. You know. Her real name is Betty Wilkins. But she's given so much of herself in helping people in this town that everyone calls her Aunt Betty. Do you think that I might speak to her about the Reynolds story? Well, she's quite senile now, and I'm afraid it would do no good. All right, let's try. Dear, I brought you a visitor. This is Mrs. Logan. I've been telling her about you. She so wanted to meet you. She's interested in Chesapeake and history, too. Yes, and I'm very pleased to meet you. She's interested in the Reynolds story, how his wife was killed and he claimed he saw her ghost come back, and then how he was murdered and nobody ever found out who did it. Well, please try and remember. It's the David Reynolds story. Do you remember that story? I'm... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you'll have to leave. This happens when she's upset. It's lovely. It's really lovely. It's hand painted. And I thought maybe you could wear it with your white dress. I'll wear it always. Always. Remember that camping trip to Big Sur? Rain, rain from day one. Wet clothes. That sleeping bag, the wood all soaked, had to pour that quart of vintage brandy all over it to get the fire started. What a drag that seemed at the time. Now I wouldn't trade that memory for anything. I think about those days a lot. I was very happy. Honey, want some more wine? No. He smoke a pipe, is that it? Michael, you're not helping by 
doing this. Well, how about helping me for a change? I'm not made of stone. Do you know how long it's been since we've made love? Since you've allowed me to touch you? You don't care about me or how I feel or what you're doing to us. All you care about is this dream man of yours. Jen. Jenny, come on, open the door. Damn it, will you open the door? Jenny, please, open the door and talk to me. I... I'm sorry you don't believe me, Michael. And I'm sorry I made you unhappy. But I guess it has to be this way for a little while. I'll sleep in the attic. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No! It's all right. Daddy. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's a dream. I'm so frightened, David. Come here. What's wrong? Do you believe in immortality? I don't know. I can't imagine a heaven that wouldn't have trees and fields and oceans just like the earth. Whenever I'm involved in a genuinely creative act, I, I feel I'm part of something larger than myself. That I'm expressing part of some immortal creative force we've come to call God. I feel that when I make love to you. I think that's what the phrase, let your acts glorify God, really means. When you act out of love creatively, you express part of that immortal force. I'm working on a painting that gives me that feeling and still needs a touch or two. But I want you to see it. Jenny, will you leave your husband? Will you come away with me? I know it's sudden, but I sense you are like me. Come with me. We'll go to Paris, Amsterdam. Please. I need you. More than he does. You don't love him. No. I did once. I did. David, I'll go away with you. I'll go anywhere you want. But now, tonight.
after all. Were you working? You're tempting fate by being here, Elizabeth. What's the matter, David? You've never seemed so distant before. Don't you honestly understand the situation I'm in with your father? I only understand that I love you. I always have, and I always will. Hello? I seem to be intruding again. You must tell me when you've had a guest. I'm not to stay away. Elizabeth, for your sake and for mine, I must insist that you leave. Wait outside, Elizabeth. Father, please. I said wait outside. I warned you, Reynolds, but apparently there's only one language that a man like you understands. Tomorrow night, this town will celebrate the coming of a new century. For me, sir, it'll be a double celebration. For tomorrow night, I will kill you. Mr. Harrington, I implore you. No, no, you hear me, Reynolds. Tomorrow night, after the ball, my pistols and I shall be at your service. And if there's any shred of honor left in you, I expect to see you then. You can please just go away tonight. I'll go with you anywhere. Oceans will not stop him, Jenny. David! It's senseless. But if he means to do it, no power on Earth will stop him. Michael, I'd like to go again to Fire Island tomorrow, if it's all right with you. It's okay. I'll miss you. I'll worry about you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be all right, no matter what happens. What is happening? Oh, please, it'll only hurt you. Tell me. Let me worry about the hurt. I think I have a right to know. I'm in love with David Reynolds. And he's in love with me. He isn't real. Oh, he is. He is. I'm a part of his life. He's asked me to go away with him to Paris. But uh, he's going to be killed if I can't stop it. Look, I've gone back. I've seen it start, and I can see it coming. 
There's, there's going to be a duel between David and Mr. Harrington. Now, that is Pamela's father. And, and unless I can find some way to, to stop it, this Mr. Harrington is going to kill him. You don't believe a word I've been saying. I believe that you believe it. I belong there. I don't want to live here in this time anymore. I feel warmed there by everything, by him, by the way the world was then. The kind of life I could have with him. I want to have his children. I want to, I want to grow old with him. I love him. You can't go away with him. You can't save him. He's already dead. But couldn't he survive some way? If, if the past still exists right now and I can go to him, couldn't, couldn't I change what's going to happen? I love you. I don't want you to go away from me. I know you do. I know. And I'm sorry you have to go through this. I, I don't understand it. But if, if, if it's meant to happen to me, it must be meant to happen to you, too. Can't you see that? But how would I ever know what happens to you if you went away with him? If you just disappear and I never hear from you again? Oh, I'll, I'll find a way. I promise you, I will find some way to get through and let you know. It's possible to break through the barriers of time and space. I know that now, Michael. David did the night he broke the cupboard downstairs. But I belong there, and I belong with him. And if I can't find some way of saving his life and being with him, I, I just don't think I want to live either. you wait all day to call me? Listen, I don't like all this talk about her not wanting to live if he dies. I don't want to alarm you, Mr. Logan, but the human mind is capable of willing itself to die. What does that mean? That means that I think that she should be hospitalized in order to keep her from doing herself harm. Now, do you know where she is? Well, she, uh, she dropped me off at the train and she, she drove to Fire Island. Well, I want you to go and I want you to find her and I want you to stay with her and I don't want her to be alone and I want you to call me immediately. A toast to the new century. Thank you. Have you seen any sign of Jenny Logan? No, nor of Elizabeth or her father. You promised to help me fetch my case from the attic. We're dreadfully late. All right, all right.
David, I'm worried. Let's go away now. There's nothing to be worried about. Look at him over there. He hardly seems so formidable tonight, nor is he bristling with weapons. I'm sure he spoke out of pain and temper. No. He intends to kill you. Now, how can you possibly know what he's going to do? I do know. Dance with me. Have this dance, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Stop worrying. Let's enjoy ourselves. Some say it was the duel that killed him. Others say it was the woman who he took up with. I have to leave. What? Uh, I have to leave. Why can't you stay? I don't want you to go away ever again. We're going away together. Oh, we will. Only I must leave you now for just a little while. Don't ask. Please allow me this. Please. When will you be back? Oh, soon. Uh, soon. Tonight, I promise. Mrs. Bates, I really haven't any time right now. You must come to Aunt Betty's immediately. But the doctor's with her. She's not expected to last the night. Well, she's shown me something that's shocking. What is it? 
I can't discuss it on the phone. You must come here at once. It concerns the murder of David Reynolds. I'll, I'll be right there, yes. Thank you. It was in her trunk. She made me search for it and insisted that you see it. I had no idea. All these years, she kept her true identity a secret. Aunt Betty. Elizabeth. Are you Elizabeth Harrington? Yes. It's true. After David's death, I left my father's house and traveled abroad for many, many years. I returned only after my father's death, but not as a Harrington. Never again as a Harrington. I could never return to that life or to that house with the memory of what I had done. What do you mean? It was I who killed. David Reynolds. After you left the ball, I sought out David. I had to tell him of my feelings. I may have expected his anger, but never his cruelty. I want you to stay away from me, Elizabeth. Your persistence is useless. It can only serve to make your father more irrational than he already is. Please understand once and for all that your feelings for me are not returned. There never was anything between us. There isn't now. There never will be. Even if I weren't in love with Jenny Logan, I would not want you. I hated him. I hated him and wished him dead. I knew about the duel. I even took a pistol with me in order to stop it. But at that moment, I had no intention of stopping it. I hid behind a tree, and I watched them as they walked off the distance. There would be no chance of David surviving. For if my father missed, I would not. Where, Elizabeth? Where did they do all? in a clearing behind the bandstand. What time did the duel take place? Just before midnight. Michael, I don't have time to talk. I'm in a hurry. I bet you are. I just came back from Fire Island. David is going to die if I don't get to him. <laughs> oh, oh, you're good. Really good. Please, Michael, please. You had me fooled with this crazy act of yours. I started believing all this jazz about this dress. Taking you back into the past. And all the while, you have another affair with some guy. Well, join the club, baby. Eight, nine, ten. 
can. Jenny, stop playing games. Jen? Resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Logan? Yeah. Sorry to bother you, but what do you want done with these paintings? What paintings? These paintings I found behind this wall here. Looks like they've been back here an awful long time. Yeah, these are old. Yeah, old and dusty. I'll get a crate. I promise you, I will find some way to get through and let you know. I wear it always. Always. David asked me to go away with him to Paris. I want to have his children. I want to grow old with him. I love him. It is possible to break through the barriers of time and space. It is. Thank you. 